Thank you very much for watching my video once again. We are now taking the last lab on atrial fibrillation. Here is the scenario. The patient walks to the doctor and asks him or her, how did I get this? Why did I chase within my chest? Why is my heart running? Running to where? How did I get this? Okay, let's go and see if we can give him the right answer. Does will ask this patient a lot of questions. History taking. One, was the heart raising? Can you tap on the table for me, please? To describe the way you now the heart, whether regular or irregular. But in atrial fibrillation, it is irregularly irregular. When did it start, the onset? You know, that will determine what we do, okay? How has it been? The cause, is it getting worse? Is it just long, calm ones and never again, or coming and going, no? Parasitismal, no, no. We've discussed this before. For how long? Appetitions, shortness of breath, chest pain, you coughing? And if you are coughing, any sputum, you know, is it was in the morning, and so on and so forth. Is it when you lay down? To know if this person is having lung disease, that could be a, a probable cause of atrial fibrillation or having congestive cardiac failure already, which could be the part of the complication of atrial fibrillation. And if the heart failure on its own could actually cause atrial fibrillation, and atrial fibrillation could you know, present as a you know, heart failure also, you know, having causing the complication of heart failure. But, okay, it's just you no know, back and forth between them. Trochomocytoma is sudden, it is sudden. Yes, serious headache here. The BP is high, and this patient is sweating. Any ongoing infection anywhere? Is this person having any psychiatric disease? Have you been diagnosed with panic attack before? Do you have what we call an agoraphobia, you know, fear of space, or any phobia for that matter? Have you ever been diagnosed with diabetes mellitus because that could lead to coronary artery disease? You might be on medication, and the medication might have treated you to hypoglycemia right now. And we're going to just do the you know, get the glucometer, take the blood, you know, run it. That's not the value of glucose, by the way. Any time of problem here? You know, how do you perceive heat and cold? more than others. We're going to do what we call physical examination. We're going to check entire cardiovascular system, entire respiratory system, and of course, peripheral vascular disease. Here, I will promise that very soon I'm going to make some videos on physical examination. So you can be on the lookout. What are the possible complications here? The long-term complications here are stroke from thromboembolism and heart failure. Death is possible because if it increases the chances of sudden death, and even non sudden cardiac death is possible. I have explained in the course of other videos how we get to stroke using chart score to rule out the probability of having stroke or not, and the heart failure because the heart is no longer efficient, not pumping enough blood to supply all organs. So, 
the heart is failing because the atria are just quivering, just relating, they're not actually pumping. Okay, how will anybody with this problem come down with stroke? Silence cerebral ischemia, which means might be not might not be symptomatic, but could be revealed by imaging. Defibrillatory contraction will lead to stasis, and the stasis will allow for clause formation. And when any of that is dislodged, embolism occurs. I know the blood moves from the left ventricle to aorta to the brain, and there it causes ischemic stroke. Heart failure, on the other hand, the returns from the inferior vena cava and superior vena cava will not be completely or to a larger extent be pumped into the lungs, and that return back to the lead ventricle will be minimal. And of course, the atria are doing their job and the ventricle is responding, but efficiency is lost because it's not being coordinated. That's how heart failure comes in. So not enough is reaching the left ventricle and not enough is getting to all of them. So the heart is not meeting up. How do we prevent this unfavorable condition? Watch all risk factors and address them. You can go over my video on risk factors. There's possibility of catheter ablation to permanently stop effect. Use chart score to determine the risk of thromboembolism and possible stroke. The higher the score, anything greater than three over six is very, very likely that the person will come down with stroke. And since you have that clue, you can consider antithrombotic therapy if this risk is that high. So just discuss with neuro people and cardiologist on becoming anti-superspinogen intubator. Yes, yeah, so we've been talking about cardioversion since the beginning, now to the end of this presentation. So when there is AFib, the time of cardioversion is synchronized cardioversion. 120 joules could be used if it is by basic defibrillator. But 200 joules, if it is monophasic, will be enough. Are we going to talk about other arrhythmias? Oops. All that supraventricular or ventricular arrhythmias will be out very soon. I'll be talking about them very soon. So be on the lookout. Thank you for watching my videos. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and you'll be able to get my videos as soon as they are out. All these other topics that I promise I will be on video soon, will definitely be. The next few days, I'll be publishing some other new ones. Thanks and I appreciate it. Merci beaucoup.